Our ecosystem is based off of energy derived from plants. Without light to use these plants, then organisms would have no power to live. Everything in the world you see today is because of light. In its essence, you see everything by light reflecting off of objects. There are many forms of light, ranging from gamma rays to radio waves, all of which have different wavelengths. In fact, wavelengths determine the type of light we see and do not see. There are fundamentally two types of light. There is a non-visible light and the visible light. The visible light is what we see and it's only a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum in between ultraviolet rays and infrared rays. Out of the whole spectrum, there's a very small portion we can actually see the rest consists of, you know, radio waves, AM, FM, radio waves, microwaves, things like that different frequencies. The wavelengths of the visible light range approximately from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. These wavelengths are very important as they determine the color we see. The colors are arranged in an acronym of Roy G. Biv, which represents red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. These are in the order of range between largest wavelengths to shortest wavelengths of the visible light spectrum. The gases contain electromagnetic spectrums. They are even in our sun, which is what causes the light. It also explains why our sky is blue, because the blue light of the spectrum is scattered more efficiently by the molecules in our atmosphere. And red and orange are less scattered so that's why during sunrise and sunset we see red and orange and not blue or violet. Within the electromagnetic spectrum, the larger the wavelength, the less potential energy, and the shorter the wavelength, the higher the potential energy, as larger waves have less frequency and therefore less energy, and vice versa. All the colors of visible light blend to make white light, which is the color of the sun's light. The sun's light is the basis for all life and energy of our planet Earth. This solar energy of light, as well as different colors of light, will be tested to find what exactly produces the most energy via solar panel. This experiment was first conducted by deciding which color light to test with the solar panels. We selected light colors with a high frequency, green, low frequency, red, and yellow in between the two. Once the light colors were decided on, we needed a controlled environment for testing. This would come in the form of a wooden box in which we mounted and gave power to the light and measured the voltage produced using solar panels and a volt gauge. We also tested power produced by natural sunlight with which to compare our results. Based on our findings, sunlight, white light, has the most energy which may correspond to how most plants grow best when in the sunlight and not artificial light as sunlight has more energy and voltage to be harnessed by plants. The process of harnessing light for energy is called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process that takes in CO2 and water, which is reacted with light energy to create glucose and oxygen and energy. The process, in short, works by using light energy to split a water molecule to harness electrons, which go through the electron transport chain to create ATP to power cell activities and NADPH, which enter the Calvin cycle. Using CO2, the Calvin cycle begins which oxidizes the material and eventually creates sugars, 
which I use for plant long-term energy. All of these reactions require light to process, which in turn means light is the source for plant life. Plants are known as autotrophs. As they sustain themselves without eating other organisms, they grow using the light's energy in the products of cellular respiration in other organisms, CO2. Organisms such as humans are heterotrophs and sustain from other organisms or plants. These other organisms all get their energy from another organism, ultimately from plants. Hence, light is the source for all life today. Another use for the electromagnetic spectrum is to send signals along optical fibers because they can travel in a curved path. And last but not least, it's also used in plasma screen TVs because of the liquid crystals moving rapidly, causing the light to go and shine in different angles. Alternative energy should be an important focus for everyone as a as a you know global consciousness and even national security kind of depend on finding a an alternative source of energy for the country. The sun is this massive source of energy that you know it the energy that it puts off in one day is just so great and you know most of that just kind of goes down on the earth and we don't do anything about it but based on this we do see that the visible light produces a lot of energy if we can eventually get to be able to harness that we will have a good alternative energy source and can hopefully uh, get rid of coal burning and things like that <laughs>